could you start us off with, with money flow? Why would someone be helped with hypnosis or hypnotic languaging such as NLP might help them with? In terms of money, they specifically, they want to uh, make more money, usually, <laughs> to put it uh, succinctly. Yeah. <laughs> they want to increase their money flow. Uh, sometimes we see that on the other end also. Sometimes people study it so that they can make more money by, by helping clients. Um, usually, um, at least I like to believe this, usually people go into these uh, healing modalities as, as practitioners in order to uh, help people, more of an altruistic approach. They want to actually benefit the world and, and help others. And if you think about it, that's the only way you can really make money anyway is if your heart is in it, if you're really you know, dedicated to helping people, that's the way to uh, to make it all work. Yes. So they go into it for many reasons, but two of the strongest are probably to get money flowing in their life and and go past subconscious blocks maybe or to study it for themselves so that they can uh, help other people in this area. So when you think of... Um, helping people get, say, the languaging to get out of debt, because debt sounds so heavy and negative to many people, um, and, and kind of the, the way you might language things, um, even as people in conversational hypnosis talk to themselves and others, what would you have to say about that? Well, I would uh, say speak the language of the person who's already out of debt. I, I don't really think being out of debt is a is a great standard. That's, that's kind of ground level. You want to then build on top of that. So speak the language of someone who's not only out of debt, but who is actually uh, financially self-sufficient, uh, successful, and looking toward uh, even more of a future. So uh, the way to do this is it feels like you're lying to yourself. It feels like you're just making things up because they're not true at that moment, but that's fine. Your subconscious mind hears those things and gravitates toward them. So for example, someone who is in debt can actually say, I have uh, X amount of money in the bank, $10,000 or whatever would be a, a reasonably a good amount for them. And by saying that over and over, the subconscious mind finds a way to make that real in their reality. So it's going to feel like a lie. It's going yes. to feel like you're, you're fooling yourself. Uh, in a sense, you are. However, it's fooling yourself into living into that reality because your subconscious mind hears it over and over sees the disconnect between what it's hearing and what it's seeing and works on bridging that gap. And this works on a very practical level by the person taking advantage of opportunities that are presenting themselves in the environment, opportunities to make money. Oh, that's so true. And if we feel it and we say, say it and we practice it and we live it, 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 you know, at first it does feel like we're um, making it up. And, but, you know, it, it's a practicing, eh? How you how you let it into your life and you believe these things and you and you let them influence you from the positive side. Absolutely, it gets it gets easier and easier, and then you realize that the next level is going to require the same thing. You just rinse and repeat. You know, I have it. I have ten thousand dollars in the bank. Okay, they got out of debt, then they got plus you know ten thousand to that level. Now I have fifty thousand dollars in the bank. Now I have a hundred thousand dollars in the bank, and you can do this with any goal. Just speaking that language of the future moves you toward that. Great, great. So, um, it isn't um, only languaging, but hypnosis and NLP have been about the way we communicate to ourselves. And could you talk a little bit about that subconscious uh, area versus a conscious area and how people can understand maybe about their purpose, passion, and profit, and, and even their generosity and ph philanthropy, which is also part of this, how they can start to um, to have a, a mindset that works for them. Okay, well, first of all, an understanding of the subconscious mind versus the conscious mind would be very beneficial. So you can think about it like a, a, an iceberg, and most of the iceberg is beneath the water. You don't see it. The larger part of that mass is below the water. What you see on the top of the water would be the the uh, similar to the conscious mind. And sometimes we think that that's all we are, is the conscious mind, not realizing that the greater part of us beneath the surface of the water, the subconscious mind, is actually where all of the action happens. That's the part that's subjected to the currents in the water. That's the part that's going to be directed by which way the water's flowing. 
And in this case, in our uh, analogy that we're creating, the, the water flowing would be all the, the influences from the past, our parents, uh, authority figures, uh, our thoughts about ourselves, other people's feedback about us. And we've assimilated all of that into this belief about ourselves, and it's directing our subconscious minds, which then influences our conscious actions. So if you want to make a change, it's important to do it at a subconscious level. And to speak to the idea that you said about uh, passion and so forth, and, and, and using really using the law of attraction and, and giving and receiving, uh, that gets us into more of a somewhat of a metaphysical realm uh, in which what we put out there we're going to get back. And you can see this on a practical level, too. If you walk through your day smiling at everyone, they're going to smile back at you. If you frown at everyone, they're going to frown back at you. That's the way it works. And this works on a greater level, too, because if we put out positive thoughts into the world that we live in, into our environment, into everywhere we go, we're going to get back positive things. We're going to see that over and over. And it works on a small scale, you know, interacting one-on-one. And it acts on a, on a larger scale, which affects our entire lives and can actually direct our financial future. This is quite amazing when people aren't aware of all these things and then they start to be aware of them. They, they, they have to get used to being um, wealth and health and happy and all those positive things if they haven't been used to it. Do you have any stories about how you have helped people change their life um, with abundance uh, through your hypnosis and NLP that could be helpful to people that maybe, you know, this is fairly um, still new or they, they haven't made the, the milestones in all the areas that they want to. Okay. Well, one of the stories that really stands out in my mind is someone who was a uh, Hollywood producer and who's very successful. Uh, and when, this is when I had my office in Beverly Hills in the Roxbury Medical Building, 90210. I had an office there for about four years. Uh, I really enjoyed it, uh, but um, I left that office because I found it to be a little stressful. Parking in Beverly Hills is awful. But during that time, I had a lot of Hollywood types who would come to me. And uh, this producer came to me, and he had previously been a top producing producer, producing financially for himself and his family and producing uh, wonderful movies for Hollywood. But he was in a slump. He had lost his mojo, as he put it, and he wanted me to help him regain it. So... I worked with them through a series of sessions using both hypnosis and neurolinguistic programming, teaching him the practical value of some of the concepts I've shared today, you know, thinking about the future, not focusing on where you are right now, but focusing on the future. Another technique that was very important that I taught him was taking, and this is from neurolinguistic programming, taking something from the past and using it in the present to create the future. And that is the idea of when he felt that he was on top of the world, when he felt that he was a top producing producer, when he felt that people valued him, people cared about him, people wanted to work with him. Having that mojo back, as he put it, uh, was the, uh, the, the essence of what brought him back into being a top producer. And now he's very successful again and very happy. But even if people weren't uh, you know, on top of the world at one point in their own minds, they at least felt good at some point. They at least felt confident at some point. So that's what NLP can bring to the table, allowing you through uh, the installation of an anchor, having some an anchor that you can fire off, allowing you to have access to that power in the past right now, and that's going to then create your future. Yes, I, I've experienced this myself, and I, I will be... Um giving testimony to what you're saying because I think the example you gave is great and that people can experience some of that anchoring and um, that towards wealth and and um, myself um, doubling wealth and doubling doubling of whatever it is you want to double through an anchor it's an energetic shift that really does uh, help bring it into the now from the past but into the now and to the, the future you want to build. And I think this is a great thing. Um, if people can explore this more, this interview can only do so much for each one. But, um, you know, that I think is giving people an idea of the power of it. I know you have a gift for everybody. Before we go on to more questions, I wondered if you would um, talk about your gift, the program, Your Inner Millionaire. And um, there's a link. I have it here, but you could read it out if you have it. 
Okay. Do you have your link? I don't know if I have the same link your, as you. What link do you have? Oh, okay. Okay, well, I have um, the www.stevegjones.com uh, forward slash mp3 forward slash program underscore sign inner I-N-N-E-R underscore sign millionaire M-I-L-L-I-O-N A-I-R-E dot mp3. Okay. Is that correct? That, that is the, the direct okay. way to go there. So, or you can just go to stevegjones.com. Uh, if you just go to stevegjones.com, yes. just, just my name, stevegjones at a dot com, you'll find the link there also. I think that would be an easier way. So uh, go there and check it out. Great. Uh, th so that's a free recording that we've got for everyone listening. And what that is, it's just uh, the, the idea is that everyone has within them the, the ability to be a millionaire, to be uh, wealthy. We're seeing more millionaires than ever before these days. A lot of it is because of the ability that people have that they didn't in the past. You know, in the, in the past, we had a few people who owned businesses and a lot of people who work for those businesses. Now we see, uh, with the internet in particular, that's really opening up. And so we see a lot of ability for people to do that. Also, we see a lot of uh, just all kinds of innovations. There's an innovation explosion going on. It's been going on for a while now, for at least 10 years, just people coming up with all kinds of great ideas. Uh, mostly we see them in the online world, but we also see them in the sciences. We see them in, in medicine. We see them in physics. We see them in all kinds of uh, wonderful worlds. And people are becoming wealthy. And the essence of all of that is people tapping into what's in them. What do I want to bring into the world? What's in me that I can share with the world? Then when I do that, it's going to benefit people. And then, of course, you're rewarded financially. You don't do it for the money, but because you're helping so many people, you are rewarded. So this helps you tap into that, your inner genius, which can then lead to wealth, of course. So it's the uh, recording that's going to help you activate your inner millionaire, as I call it. And it's available at my website, which is just stevegjones.com. Thank you. Thank sure. you, Steve. And thank you for the gift. I'm sure people will benefit from going to your site and, and uh, getting um, activated in this area. Oh, my pleasure. So, um, you know, yeah, okay, great. Um, the uh, idea of more millionaires, I, I had a dream that um, to be a billion-dollar philanthropist, and, you know, I thought at first when I woke up from this dream that, that – uh, that's way out there. That's beyond being a millionaire. But then I started to think, well, I reached every dream I had ever set, so why not? So it kind of energized me. It didn't seem um, like I was going to be crushed if I didn't reach it, but I, I just felt like uh, maybe there was more to it, and it wasn't about me, but more about the source and about other collective things, such as the Internet and the people on the Internet. And... Um, you know, then I went to the Wealthy Visionary Conference with Marsha Reeder last year, and we raised $50,000 for the Unstoppable Foundation in, in, in a couple of hours. You know, these things are just amazing new innovative, innovative ideas, and they help people in Africa, or my charity is in Bangladesh, and all these people are being helped that couldn't have been helped before. That's awesome. So yeah. I think what you're saying, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. got to you got to so think important. big. You, you help thinking of helping people is great. You know, look at Facebook. Look at even before that, MySpace. You know, these are these are concepts that came about with the idea of how can how can we bring some kind of value to people's lives. And this, in social media's case, it was the idea of connecting people. Uh, we look at applications like WhatsApp. You know, that's a great way to make uh, you know to talk to people across the uh, across the world. You can send uh, videos and messages and pictures to people across the world at no charge. You know, these ideas came about for great reasons. Yeah. How can I help people do things? And so, like, like you're thinking, you know, how can I help people? So when you think that way, you naturally create interest in it. People aren't thinking, oh, goodness, that's a selfish idea. No, they're, they're realizing that it's a, a wonderful, awesome idea that helps a lot of people. So you, you get people to rally behind you. So... That's really the essence of how you get things going and how you create a life for yourself and how you get money flowing eventually toward you. But the idea is not to not to make money. The idea is to help people. Yeah, yeah. So um, 
this is an important point that you're saying. You know, it is about profit in business. We can't be in business without profit, and I think everybody has uh, abundance that they can have. But it also helps to give. And how do you think the giving itself and connecting with others is going to change in the future? Because you're talking about us building our future through our our, our new th ways of thinking, through hypnosis, through NLP, through anchoring and things like that. Could you just say a few uh, things about how you view the world as changing and what we can do? Sure. Well, we see a lot more wealthy people now. And I've heard some stories recently that really indicate to me how it's probably going to go in the future. I heard about uh, a, a billionaire in Russia who was helping save dogs uh, before the Olympics. I, I heard yesterday about a, uh, a billionaire in the United States, I believe it was, who is helping by donating uh, money to, I believe it was six different uh, hospitals, uh, you know, large amounts of money. So when people start getting these large excess amounts of money, they start to do things like Bill Gates and his wife, you know, giving back because they realize, okay, I've got all my basic needs met and then some. I've got money for myself and my family for years to come. What can I do with the rest? There's really no use in just having money sit around. So I can give it back. I can enhance people's lives. I can help them out. So I think the nature of giving is going to uh, change in that way. We're going to see more people with more money helping more people. Yes. Great. I... I think that you're, um, you're right, and I think that as more people find out ways that they actually can do that, we'll all get more creative and perhaps help the world be um, countering some of the things that have been uh, uh, creating so many difficulties. Um, and when we start those changes together, then that's going to allow us to not only appreciate money in a different way. It's, it's not about the love of money, it's what the money can do for um, the distri distribution in the right areas. And we all have to get, begin to be uh, thinking in ways that are different. And this is where NLP and hypnosis can come in because if our brains are uh, able to receive things in new ways uh, and we're evolving all the time, then um, how can hypnosis help us to, to be in the values that really help us all and um, bring us more wealth? Well, by opening your, uh, your abundance mindset, and that's really the uh, a main part of what the, the recording that we mentioned earlier, it's available at stevegjones.com, the free recording. Uh, that's really what it's all about, just opening this abundance mindset. Uh, so we tap into abundance by realizing that when we... Uh, develop ourselves, whatever's unique about ourselves, when we embrace that and, and cultivate it and develop it, it really benefits other people. They see us and they say, wow, there's such a, there's such a change in that person. What is it? Uh, I, want to, I want to be like that. I want to have some of that. And so they start to think, well, what is it that's about, about me that's unique? So they start developing that. And so that's the nature of abundance. When one person benefits, everyone benefits because they start to generate more money. They're able to help more people. Plus, they serve as an inspiration for other people. So hypnosis helps by just tap, allowing you to tap into that cycle, which is just you developing yourself and sharing that gift with the world. I can't um, thank you enough for that part because I do think that many people, you know, they may have tried hypnosis or, or even heard of or done a little bit of NLP, but I really encourage people to do more of that because I think that um, they will um, accelerate their ability to find their uniqueness and bring that into the connective um, uh, gift giving and also um, new creative ideas. I think those are core to us uh, moving forward. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's what the world depends on. We, we need these new, wonderful, amazing ideas. You know, people they take a shower and they get a great idea. They're driving, they get a great idea. They're waking up, they get a great idea. They write it down, they act on it, they build it into something huge and amazing. And also people who want to take chances. I mean, not everything you build is going to be huge and amazing. Sometimes people strike out. We go back to Edison, you know, the story of the light bulb, all those attempts. 
So not every you know hit is going to be a, you know a bazillion dollar hit that's going to uh, change the world, but. If we continue believing in ourselves and continue moving forward and continue generating these ideas and putting them out there, eventually we've got a lot of people with a lot of great ideas and we get uh, just an abundant, amazing world. Sorry, I coughed a little bit that one. <laughs> yeah, that um, yes, it is an abundant, amazing world. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and I think that... Um, there are some areas of hypnosis. Um, what is the rationale behind the the way that people need to relax into or change um, or the receptivity that happens to new ideas in hypnosis? Perhaps people have experienced or been exposed to more the trickster kind of hypnosis, but more well, hypnotherapy is what I'm familiar with myself. I'm wondering how the rational mind can, um, first of all, uh, come to the point where we decide that we can benefit from hypnosis, but then um, also uh, give more permission to bypass it in a way, to get to the, past the gatekeeper and, and, and go into the subconscious. Well, I, I don't know. Can you know. say more about that? Okay, um, I, I'm not so sure that that's a uh, something uh, necessarily a burden put necessarily on the client. Uh, the uh, people have uh, hypnotic aptitude, and that's measurable by the uh, the scale that Harvard and Stanford developed. Uh, for one, uh, the uh, which measures the suggestibility of people. I, after finishing my doctorate in education, revised that scale a little bit to make it into a quiz, to make it a little simpler. But uh, that's an aptitude that the client walks in with. Uh, as far as the client releasing that for the hypnotherapist or NLP practitioner or any other therapist to be able to get in a little more easily, um, I, I think just showing up is probably good enough. I, I don't like to put a lot of burden on the, on the client. I, I believe that uh, the more they quote unquote try, the more they can potentially work against it. Um, but I would say if, if you're interested in uh, availing yourself to the services of a hypnotherapist or any other therapist, um, your job is to show up with uh, an open mind. Um, that doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to affect your hypnotic aptitude per se, uh, but just Showing up and, and following directions, I think, would be the, the best thing that someone can do. Just like if you're going to have surgery or anything else, you know, you, you show up when they tell you and you, 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 you prep as they tell you. And if they give you any instructions for afterwards, you follow those too. Great. I think, I think that's really helpful because if we want to, we can uh, put our trust in someone that's going to lead us in the way that our subconscious really um, can be shifted. That concludes this interview. For more information about hypnosis and myself, Dr. Steve G. Jones, please visit my website, stevegjones.com.